Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about me and about, and hopefully it gets across the idea that I stole the idea from another life form, not actually another human, but a termite. Um, now, I'm going to talk about um, the humans first. I'm standing here, and I'm the fifth ape, OK? We all came from Africa, all of us, all of us humans, originally, a long time ago. It's about 600 million. Um, and we have different colored skins, because that relates to the UV light value of where we uh, arose. Um, I happen to have uh, a, a white skin because I came, my ancestors came, uh, had, had wandered all the way up to the north of, of, uh, of England. Um, now, I have bo I'm born with this skin. This is my first skin. My second skin are the clothes I wear. The third skin is the building we're in three skins. Now, I, I'm in charge, obviously, of making buildings, the third skin. Um, now, I want to talk about these guys. I think you can just vaguely see a termite's mound. Now, you know these mounds, because you see them in, the, in Harare around here. Yeah, this is actually in the golf course. Um, and I'm going to talk about the shape of energy. And energy comes, if you're a scientist, in many forms. But it originates from the sun. And these guys are very special, these termites, because they actually build a mound, a building, which is an extension. It's the third skin. It's an extension to the organism of the termite. And it's mostly below ground, down here. And at the ground level is the interface between the rest of the world and the underground. They go underground because down there it's stable. It's a stable temperature and humidity. Humidity is very important. And they know about living underground like the trees, because they go down to the water table. Sorry, it's a bit vague here, but you'll see it on better slides. But what is above, below ground is the same volume as what's above ground, because they're excavating to make spaces underground. And they're taking the soil up and building this mound. And to me, that's absolute magic. So every morning, I get in this old car, very reliable, Series 6 Land Cruiser. And I drive with my two assistants. right, And we go, and every. I record the same termite mound every day. I, I was there this morning, and I took a photograph of it. And we see it change as the, as the environment changes. This is summer. That's winter. That's spring. And that's after the bushfire. And this is just, this was actually uh, September. And it suddenly begins to get warm. And like all the plants and everything, it's going mad. It's spring. And it starts sprouting new towers. And the towers get active. But it still rains, and then it gets dry, and then it rains, and it gets dry. Um, next slide. Now, these guys are very small. They're blind. And most of them are feminine. Um, that means they work hard. Right, uh, And they seem to be, when you study it first, you see that there's a difference in temperature between the underground and the surface. And they exploit that. We call it the delta T in science and in, in engineering, the difference. And here, it's usually about 31. I put a thermometer down, and I, t I test the difference in temperature. And I usually get 10 degrees or even more. So that's enough to drive the air out. Because one thing they do need is oxygen. And so do the fungus that they're growing down there, that they eat. 
So the whole system requires oxygen, and, it want, and they have to get rid of CO2. Um, so next slide. You can see this was taken about a week ago when it was raining. You can see the activity. The next day, it was dry, no activity. So I know that it's to do with humidity and the amount of water in the air. And then you'd study the science and the, and the, uh, the uh, whole physics of adding water to air. When you add water to air, it actually gets lighter. It doesn't sound right, does it? But it does. And that's because you guys, you, you can tell me it's, it's the atomic weight of water is actually lighter than air. So the, it's all part of this. Now they're growing, they're actually, next slide, they're actually um, building a lung. It's very like our lungs. And it's a breathing system. Um, and here are all my drawings. I study the, 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 what's happening by actually making a drawing. Next slide. So I'm studying the form that is made from a process. The process of building is actually governed by the environment. So who is the architect? It's the sun. It's the sun and it's the air movement. They're breathing and understanding. They can feel. They're blind. They can actually feel the changes in temperature and in, in, in humidity. Absolutely key. Very like in our next slide. You can hear the lung. Um, now I'm going to go to the human, because I mustn't uh, waste time. The human has these three skins, and the human body um, also gets direct light from the sun and feels that. You feel the direct light when you go out. That's radiant heat. And then you also, and you get it on your head, you also get um, diffused heat from clouds, reflected light. That's what we call low, low uh, or um, wide angle. Um, you have short wave and long wave, so it's more long wave. And then we evaporate, our skins evaporate heat. We, we actually evaporate nearly 80% of the heat of, 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 of how, how we, um, uh, our metabolism works. Um, and we do it through our skin. Now, we can outrun all other animals, including other apes, actually, because we can sweat. And I've seen um, hunter-gatherers in, in Botswana run for four days after a, after a, 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 a giraffe until the giraffe actually falls down, and they're still running. So that's our great asset. And being bipedal, it's much, it's bipedal. That means uh, walking on two legs. We, we have this advantage. Next slide. Now, um, so I get very excited about this termite. Uh, the termite's been with me for nearly 50, 60 years. I've been watching them. And that's when, so when I was doing Eastgate, I was thinking of, the architecture of heat flow, in this case, the, ch the chimneys. The chimneys actually were inspired by that chimney you saw, the, the termites building. Um, and we worried about the shape. And you can, okay. I, now the other thing about this building is that it's prickly. Why is it prickly? Next slide. Oh, well, he, here's, here's where it works. This was, um, this was the day-night shift. I found that there was an advantage that in this climate, because of clear skies at night and because of our altitude, the night temperature is usually 10 degrees lower than the day temperature. So I can use that difference, that delta T, just like the termites, and by blowing cold air through the building at night, at six air changes, and then during the day, I blow it less fast. So I, and, so, and at, at night, I store, blow out all the previous day's heat, and I store the heat, the cool during the night in teeth under the floors of the building. And we'll see that in the next slide. Um, so this, that's the night <coughs> circuit, and this is the day circuit. And that's how it, how it looks when you 
slice it in half, just like the delta T that I saw in the, in the termites. Next. Um, so underneath the floors, there are teeth, concrete teeth like this, and the air is blown through at night, cools down the concrete teeth, and that stores the coolth, the coldness. And the next day, the air is blown through at a slower rate, and in the, then into the office, and then out of the top of the office, just by fans. So I have day fans and night fans. Next slide. Now, the outside, in the first slide, I, I, I said, why is it prickly? It's prickly because a prickly building is inefficient at absorbing heat during the day because there are many surfaces. You know, there's always shadow on this side and bright on that side. So it's very bad at absorbing heat and, ve and very if it was like that, I would absorb a lot of heat. But like that, it doesn't absorb much heat. It's just like these guys. That's a cactus. It knows, the cactus knows that at night, it can get rid of heat much quicker because there are so many prickles. It's getting rid of heat to space. So make a prickly building, you get advantages during the day, and you get advantages at night. Always think of day and night. Next one. Now, take a, take a tin roof. You see that tin roof? And you see the leaves above. If you do some measurements, you find that a, a photon of light, that's a particle of light, or a wavelength of light coming from the sun, one, one, po one photon hitting a leaf, it has a very small distance to travel to the edge of the leaf and then into the air. Whereas if it hits the tin roof, it has a much longer distance to travel before it can get into the air. That is called the scaling effect. The rate of dispersal of heat is um, B is much bigger than A. It's very simple. So the rate of dispersal of heat when the photons hit a tin roof is much longer than the, the time it takes to hit a leaf. And then you get many leaves in a sort of pyramidal. So it's about seven degrees cooler in the shade underneath a tree than it is underneath a tin roof. Remember that. So we should be growing trees everywhere in the city to cool the city down, particularly in the time of global warming. Next slide. Right, so that's why it's a prickly building. These are all the measures we took on the outside of Eastgate. We just copied the leaves of the trees. So somehow the termites have said, right, mate, you copy us, but now you go and look at all the other things in nature and copy them. I'm copying the processes that, that's going on in them, not the form so much, but the process. Right, next. This is a disaster. It was invented in 1921 by Mies van der Rohe. And when you go to school of architecture, everyone that teaches you, Mies van der Rohe, fantastic architect. He said, glass towers, wonderful. It's a disaster. And we can't get rid of it. Complete disaster. Next slide. So I'm against modernism. This is a building I did in Australia. And it, it's like. It's very much like a forest. The thing about a natural forest, not a plantation, but a natural forest, has trees all at different heights. And that allows the sun to get in at different angles. That's, I don't know if you can see that slide, but you can see there. If you the plantations have a problem because all the trees grow up the same height. So you don't get as much light in. It's very much darker down below. You know, in a plantation than in a natural forest where all the trees are different heights. Now, um, the leaves are much bigger at the bottom of the forest than the top. So in Australia, we made the windows smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom. Because if you take the light level in a street, narrow street, 40 meters high, you find it's darker at the bottom than it is the top. So your, your window should be like that. And then we, we made the ducts taking the air out the other way because you need to pull out more and more air. 
So the whole form and shape is shaped by energy. Energy and light are the same thing. Remember E equals MC squared? That's the, that's the connection, Einstein's connection between light and energy. Very simple. Um, here we actually measured the, the before we did, while we were designing it, we did these simulations of the light levels we'd get if we built the building where it was. And you can see the penetrations. That's the great thing about modern technology. You can, you can actually simulate that. Um, and that's what we did with the windows. This is how it works with lights. It's not all glass. It's different light shelves and, and screens. That's why I was very fussy about pulling these blinds down. There are blinds and there are screens. So you can adjust. The window is a very important element in the, in the light. And this is what it looks like. I use plants a lot on the outside of the building to, to disperse heat. Next. And the, the, the western gable, the, width, the sun comes round. So we have huge shutters. And they move with the sun. They move like this. And they, um, they, they're, 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 it's a sort of wave. As the sun moves round, that's controlled by a computer, which is timed every day is different and it, it and it shuts so that when the sun really beats down on the west it's closed and then it's open so you most of the day it's open and then it just shuts for the sun um, and the other side it actually leaks it's a, it's a membrane system which takes a long time to describe next so inside the building it's ventilated 100% fresh air, which comes up through the ground, through the floor underneath you, and it, it, it rises up. It's not like this where the air is blown down on top, which just doesn't actually work. Here, you don't use the air to cool people. You use radiance. And as I explained before in the first slide, we are much more sensitive to radiant heat and cool than to direct, to, to um, conductive and, and convected heat. So in this, is, it's all about radiant cooling. So these, this wavy roof, which you'll see on the next slide, um, is cooled down at night. And then we have chill panels underneath, which are full of cold water to cool down people. Next. There we are. This is an in interior, as it is. You can see the cool chiller panels. And there's a window. And I think the next slide shows you the, the wavy ceiling. Um, but you can see this is, uh, this is a window facing south, actually. And uh, we put in plants on the, just behind the glass, which actually cuts the glare. You probably saw in, you know, when that window was not hidden, it glared. It gave us a lot of glare. And it's very disturbing that if you're trying to work in, in, inside a building like this. So you need to break that glare as well as uh, the direct light. Next. These are the huge, this is a process, really, the architecture of process. These are the big panels that we had to make to make the ceiling, which were also structural elements. Um, and, and we had windows on the outside of the building, which opened at night to let the air in to cool out down this massive ceiling. Next. Um, and this is the whole structure, which I won't go into now, but anyone who's interested, particularly at universities, you can study this drawing. It shows you how the energy is moved around the building in water and not in air. So in, in, in this building here, we have um, ventilation by um, HVAC, which is full air conditioning. And that is, the energy is, is, is actually cooled by water coming through these things. That, that is um, done in, in, in this diagram. And it goes through a thing called phase change um, material, which um, stores the cool at night to fit the, the panel. Next. Sorry, I'm running out of time. Now, this building I built in Australia as well. It sits on a lake. And it's made of aluminium, and it cools down at night because we run water over the top of it. 
and the water cools at night from back radiation to space. And that cold water falls into the lake, and the lake is, then the water falls to the bottom of the lake, because it's heavier than the light, and we pump water up from the bottom of the lake to cool the building the next day. Next. And this one is in China, where we run water um, over a, a curtain of, of stainless steel at 12 degrees. Now, how do we get water at 12 degrees? On the roof of the building, there are pa panels like you have for hot water. Same, same as those, there's tubular, tubular solar panels. And we put that through a, that's 85 degree water, we put through a thing called an absorption chiller. I won't go into that now, but it produces water at 12 degrees. 12 degree water is pumped into a store in the basement, and we use that cold degree, 12 degree water to cool the building, different parts of the building. And um, because the water is running down this, this uh, curtain at 12 degrees, it's actually absorbing moisture from the air. It's a dehumidifier. That cools you. That's what we need in this room right now, a dehumidifier. Next. And uh, this is about the architecture of process, how process, this is how we made Eastgate in the panels. Now we made these forms that exfoliate, that fell apart so that we could get to the, next slide, um, we could get to the surface of the concrete and brush it to make it look like Great Zimbabwe. That's why it looks as though it's made of stone, granite. Next. And this is the other side of, this is the architecture of weight, showing how the weight is distributed through the building. You can actually see it. Next. And this is how, what I call the architecture of movement, how people move through the building. It's plain to see. You don't have to have notices. it. Where's the thing? Oh, it's there. You can see it. Next. And, and, and shopping under, underneath. So we're back to the idea that when you're designing a building that is sustainable, you must make an architecture of light, how light is permitted to enter the building, of weight, how the weight is distributed, of heat flow, how energy runs through the building, of process, how the building is made, of movement, how people move through it, and of material. Imagine a building built by something like termites, called AI, eh? artificial intelligence, and they all make it out of one material only. Great talk indeed, great talk. Sorry, I'm sure it's more than 18 minutes. Yeah, there is a question I want to ask you because you say there is another building that you said this is heading for disaster. What, what did you mean by that? I meant that a glass building is a disaster. Partly it lets in too much heat or cold. You can't, you can't make it green. It's the opposite of green. If you look at any glass building in Harare, just see the problems you have. You can't have so much glass and, and, and make it green. You look, you're going to need too much energy. It's impossible to make it. You, the other thing is that you try and keep it cool inside with air movement. You can't because radiant heat comes through the glass and it hits our skin. So it doesn't matter how cold you make it in, in, the, in the air, you're still going to get hot. Super. Future reimagined. Where are we going now? It's we need these kind of buildings that he is making. Wonderful.